Hi, welcome back. Let's jump straight in with the modeling of our leg and I just want to get this sort of step in here and then this flute downwards. So if we grab our leg here, especially along the bottom, let's go back to object mode. Let's turn the smoothing off. So one on the keyboard and nine for vertex. Let's taper it in slightly. And I just select all these verts along the bottom and scale them in. Okay, so now we've got a slight tapering, same as here. And the other thing I want to get is this step down piece. So let's come in and put another edge loop in here. Okay. And the point is that I get two very close together. So now when I select that edge, I should just be able to scale inwards and it gives me a nice step. Okay. So let's check that. So that's stepped in now. That's lovely. And if you want, you can put another edge loop in here and one here. So that will hold that step nice and tight when we smooth. Okay, so now I've got a nice sort of step in. If I look to the reference, there's also a hole cut down here and a ring going around it just to sort of finish the foot off. So let's put those details in. So first, let's cut the hole. So for that, we'll just put two edge loops in where we want the hole. So one here and kind of one here. And then I'm going to select the faces. So just click, double click its neighbor. And then I'm going to extrude. And let's set that to the center. Let's click the handle like so. And just drag that in a bit to create sort of a lip. Let's see how thick do we want that. No, nope, that's too many. That's about perfect. Okay, and then I'm going to want, uh, and obviously I'm going to need some control edge loops, or so that's not going to retain its shape. So let's just throw one here and one here. And let's check that. That's about perfect. Um, now, obviously, you can take your time again with the spacing, but I'm just going to do this right quick for the tutorial. And now I'm going to make a little sort of donut shape that comes out here. So one there and one there. And maybe I'll move this one a bit lower down. Grab this one and move it a bit lower down as well. And then I'll select the faces around. And I'm just going to extrude again, but this time instead of inwards, outwards. So scale like so. OK. And that gives me sort of a ring around there. and. Just select this edge all the way around, so double click it. I'm going to move it up slightly, and this one, and I'm going to move it down slightly. Okay, now I'm going to select this edge row here, bevel, and this, and bevel. And when we smooth this now, it should look rather nice. So let's go back to object mode, and three to smooth. And there's sort of a much more decorative bottom of my foot there. Now, if I look, this bottom piece isn't really anything uh, more that needs doing. That looks pretty good. So let's come out here. And yeah, that looks pretty good to me. I might, might just taper the bottom a little more, but to be honest, I think it's fine. Let's go for a slight, slight extra taper on the bottom. OK, yeah, that's nice. And then. You know, I can come in and if I want this cut any deeper or uh, this step any deeper, but actually I think it's about spot on. All right, so I'm happy with that. Now, if we look at some additional detail that we've got, we've got these sort of thin flutes cut into both the top and the bottom of the leg. You know, and I think at the minute we're matching the reference pretty well. Um, let me just take another look. No, it looks good to me. So I'm going to cut these flutes in. But first, I just want to move this back towards the cupboard so I can kind of see where I want them. All right, so I'm going to want sort of one here and then one at the front and then maybe one more round to the side. OK, whoops. So. I can't just sort of shove one of these faces backwards because that would do all sorts of terrible things when we smooth. So what we've done in the past is we've made the adjustments and then we've put in 
the edges to hold the shape. Now I'm going to put the edges to hold the shape in first. So I'm just going to come and I'm going to put one up here and then I'm going to go one, two and three and I'm going to put them fairly close together. This one should be slightly further apart. So that will be where my flute starts and down here will be where it stops. So let's put one here and then one, two, three. Okay, now select the face. You want to act as this sort of indentation here. I'm not actually sure what it's called in woodworking terms. And I think this one. So let's select all the faces. Not that one. Like so. Just so you've got a line with those two, this long one here, and then those two. And let's extrude. And let's just extrude inwards a little bit. Let's have a look at how deep we're going. So that's about right. And then I'm going to want to scale this a little bit down and a little bit inwards. Okay. So when I smooth this now, this might be a little bit too much. There we go. When I smooth this now, it'll look like a very nice sort of cut in hole as matching the one on the reference. Now all I need to do, because the control edges are already in, all I need to do now is select where I want the other ones. So I think I want one more here. Let's see where that would be in relation to the front of the cabinet. Let's get one right at the front. So this one should do it. So again, faces go one, two, three, and down and pick up these other two. And once again, you're going to need to extrude that inwards. Okay, and let's just check how far that's gone in. That's about fine. And now we're going to scale down just a little bit and scale in. Okay, so there we go. That's started to cut out these shapes from the front of the leg. There we go. Very nice. And I think I'll take one more of those and put it on this side. So let's get these equidistant apart. So we've got one cut and then two and then one. So then one, two and then one. Okay, just get the spacing right so it looks nice. And again, extrude inwards. Okay, middle mouse button is stuck. Just a second. Okay, sorry about that. I don't know why that button keeps sticking. And let's just push this inwards. That's about far enough. And once again, scale down just a little bit. Scale in. Okay. And that does it for these top sort of fluted bits around the top of the leg. There we go. Looks nice. So let's put some in down the bottom here. And again, it's just the same procedure, pretty simple really. So let's put one edge loop here, and then we'll want one, and we'll make these slightly smaller, three, and that should do it, and one here, and then one, two, and three. Okay, try and keep them an equal distance uh, apart. These two should be about the same size. You know, I don't think you need to worry about it too much. This piece of the furniture is, you know, going to be pretty far away from the action, so... Uh, right, face, one, two, one, and one, two. So again, I'm just going to really repeat this procedure. This is the kind of thing that I would normally do off camera, but it's, it is pretty quick to just get it done. So let's scale that in, have a look to see if that's looking okay. It is. So it's in about the right place for me too. So I'll just put those other two in. And there's that one. Okay. 
And there's that one. Okay, so we are just about done with our leg now. Let's have a look at it. Looks pretty good. It's a bit more um, decorative than it was before. It's got this very nice attractive sort of foot piece on the bottom now. It's got these sort of cuts in it. And it's nice and ready to be fit to the side of our table. Our chest of drawers here, sorry. So there we go. Now that's our leg pretty much done. In the next part I want to come back and look at some other adjustments we might need to make. And in fact before we do anything else or break for the next part I remembered that we actually forgot to cut the holes in these drawers the same way we did for this one. Now I'll do one of them again quickly because it doesn't take a minute. Or you can always refer back to the part where we did this and you'll find the techniques the same. But I'll just do one more on camera. So let's just put an extra edge loop in here. Okay, like so. And we're going to need one at the back here because we're going to want to push this large face in now to act as the draw. Okay, but before we do that, we want to put the lip on. Um, so this has to be smaller than the front panel. So let's just delve into the side view. Let's focus here and let's grab all of these faces okay so making sure we don't have any selected on the front we do not we can now just extrude these inwards so i'm just going to press extrude there click here and once again we're just going to scale downwards so that gives us the lip on the top and bottom okay and then push downwards so the lip on the top is bigger than the lip on the bottom and then scale inwards. Whoops, there we go. Okay, so now we've got a draw with a kind of lip on it. Now click the center face there, press G to extrude again, and just extrude downwards, making sure you, of course, don't go through the bottom of the draw. All right, so I mean, you could check that in the side view to make sure that it's okay. Uh, where are we? Side view there. Yeah, and it's fine. All right, so. I'll leave you to do the, the last draw, the bottom one there. As you see, it's not exactly very difficult. And I'll come back and we'll look at finally finishing this piece off, doing all the last little tweaks, the edge bevels and whatnot that need doing. We'll also look at turning this one piece into three pieces. In the break, I'm going to go ahead and um, duplicate these legs and just move them into position. And I will see you in the next part. So. Thanks for watching.